Hey everyone and welcome to Inspired Foodies. Today I'm going to be doing a well-known Mexican appetizer, which are nachos. These aren't your traditional chips and nacho cheese dipping type of nachos, but rather loaded nachos, which has a bunch of condiments and it's baked. So in front of me I have a lot of ingredients. This being is that two, two of the ingredients, the salsa and the guacamole, I'm going to make fresh. You don't have to make it fresh, you can get store-bought. You can get bottled salsa and uh, guacamole in a container if you don't want to do it fresh. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to make it fresh as well. So you're going to need tortilla chips of your choice. You need coriander. You need green onions, tomatoes, avocado, jalapenos, some garlic cloves, an onion. It can be white or red onion. You need lemon or lime, black beans, sour cream, shredded cheddar cheese, crushed tomatoes, sliced jalapenos if you like it spicy, and salt for taste. So I'm going to get started on the salsa first and then the guacamole. So for the salsa, you're going to start with the tomato. This is a big tomato. I'm making enough salsa for basically one to two servings. And what you're going to do is, I'm going to cut off the unedible part first of all. With these tomatoes, because you're making salsa, you don't want it to be too watery, so you're going to drain out the water portion inside, and you're just going to chop it nicely. So I'm going to drain this right now in the sink. So now, so you can see that I've already took out all the watery seeds from both of the tomatoes. You want to do that because, like I said, you don't want your um, salsa to be too watery, because that adds so much liquid to it. So we're just going to cut these into chunks real quick. You don't have to make them too fine because you're actually going to be blending them together in a, in a fruit processor or just a regular blender, doesn't matter. See these chunks are fine, big ones. gonna put it in a I'm using a blender so I'm gonna put it in a blender cup next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a jalapeno and I'm going to um, take out the seeds in the jalapeno. Okay, so for that, take off the stem. You just have to take out. You can cut it in half, actually, and it'll be easier to take out the seeds this way. This one you also don't have to be too fancy on the cutting, just enough that it's easily blended in there. Because you don't want chunks of jalapeno in your mouth when you have a salsa. Next, you're going to want to add one garlic clove. I'm sorry, you're going to add two garlic cloves because it's salsa. And there's a lot of tomato, you want to have a little bit of garlic flavor. Add a 
add one more garlic clove. Next, I'm going to take half an onion and I'm going to slice it and throw it in there as well. This one doesn't matter, you can do big chunks, little chunks, as long as you blend it nicely. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a lime. I'm going to take, I'm sorry, I'm going to take a lemon. I'm going to take only half a lemon. And I'm going to squeeze it in there. Gonna add some coriander as well. Just gonna give it a quick rough chop. Doesn't need to be too fine. I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this can of crushed tomato because in salsa you need some you need some texture as well you know salsa it's easy to scoop so think chunky tomatoes even though a blended won't do the job you need some crushed tomatoes in there as well I'm actually gonna use a spoon to take this out because I don't want it to spill Depending on how well this blends, we might I might add a little bit more tomato sauce. But first, I'm gonna add the salt and see how well this blends. So, last thing is add some salt because you don't want bland salsa. And we're just gonna go ahead and blend this. So if you look at it right now, it looks pretty well blended for a salsa. It's very thick, easy to scoop up. So we're good to go. I'm just going to give it a taste test for the salt. Because you want to make sure you have enough salt. It's got a nice lime, a lemon in it. It's got enough salt, it's got enough spice. So next I'm going to do the guacamole. For guacamole, you're going to cut it down the center. Twist it open and see a beautiful green avocado. Two abs. I'm sorry, I said you're gonna cut down the guacamole down the center and an avocado, but you're gonna see perfect avocado like this. So what I'm gonna do now is gonna have a bowl ready. I'm gonna scoop out the avocado. This is not the perfect knife to use it to grab it out actually, unfortunately. So I'm gonna use a spoon. What's that? I'm just gonna scoop out the avocado. It 
That's one portion of it. I'm gonna take out the second half of the avocado. You can scoop it out nicely. Look at that, it came out beautifully. Next, we're gonna take a fork and you're just gonna mash it. It would probably be easier to use a big salad fork instead of a small regular fork. But as you can see, the mashing is going pretty well. So I pretty much fast forwarded ahead on uh, five minutes. I finally got it mashed up. It's looking good. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to finely chop some onions actually this time because you also have, you also put onions in your guacamole. But this time it's more of a finely chop. This is also the other half of the onion that we used earlier from the salsa. We're also going to add a whole jalapeno to this and you're going to do the same thing like you did with the salsa. You're going to remove the seeds from the center because you don't need that. I'm just going to give it a little bit more of a finer chop compared to the salsa. Because in the salsa it was blended by the blades. Here it's you're going to do everything by hand. I'm also going to cut one of the one last garlic clove for the Guacamole. This should be a little bit more finer as well. Put it in there. And last but not least, well, actually, second, uh, about third last, actually. Sorry, you're gonna take a tomato. I'm gonna do half a tomato. And just like the salsa, you're going to drain out the water and the seeds because you don't want it to be too watery. See that? We're just going to chop it nicely. Two final ingredients you're going to need. Number one is half a lemon, which we are going to squeeze out. That's a lot of juice still up here. Make sure you squeeze out as much as you can if you like it really sour. And last but not least, the salt is a must. One spoon should be plentiful. You can add a little bit more because with guacamole, uh, with avocados, they're very bland, so they usually require more salt for taste. I'm just gonna mix this real quick. can tell that it looks a lot more like guacamole now with all the ingredients in there the core ingredients so now for the nachos we're gonna bake it so in order to bake it you're gonna need a pan sheet I'm gonna be using a brownie pan because that's what I have right now uh, parchment paper you want to line it with parchment paper so that nothing sticks to the pan It's okay if it's not like it's not like aluminum foil, it's easy to wrap around, but it's okay. As long as you have it lined up, you're fine. So the this is where we're gonna put all our ingredients together. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put the chips. So 
So you're gonna lay out the chips. You can you can space them out, but don't space them out too much because what happens next is that you're gonna layer the cheese, the salsa, the beans, and you don't want it to fall through the holes or the cracks of the chips. So the chips are, being, are the base because it'll hold everything together and it'll come out so good. Add a few more. These are organic tortilla chips. You can use corn chips, tortilla chips, you can use regular white flour, doesn't matter. Just make sure the tortilla chips you're using aren't thin and light because if it is, it'll be very hard to lift up and it'll break easily after you're done baking them. Add a few more because my mother and I will be eating this. And the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna layer it with the cheddar cheese, the shredded cheddar cheese. This will hold the chips together as well as all the other good stuff in it. I'm gonna be adding quite a lot of cheese since I put a lot of chips on it. So you add cheese to your liking, to your preference, but make sure you add enough cheese so that it can act as a base. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the black beans. These black beans, it's about half a can. I'm just gonna spread them over nicely. I most likely won't be using the whole thing, seeing that already two handfuls is enough to cover this with. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add some more cheese because I want the beans to be sticking to the chips and the cheese nicely. And so just a smaller layer of cheese to do the trick. For the next step, you're going to be adding the salsa. You want to layer it nicely. Look at that. So much. So nice. Perfect. The next ingredient you're going to add is actually going to be the green onion. So I didn't do this earlier. However, what you're gonna do is we're gonna chop these nicely. So I'm gonna show you it right now. Finely chop them. Cause you don't really want big chunks of onion. Unless you really love onion and you want bigger chunks, that's understandable. But finely chop them because it looks really good when it's red. And as you can see, I'm just going to scatter them all over the salsa. I'm actually going to add some more beans and cheese because there's so much salsa on top. Nothing wrong with that, it's just that I want some more condiments. So you have all these nice layers. Now the final two, the the final two th ingredients we're gonna bake on top of these. The f actually the final ingredient, sorry, will be the jalapenos, the pickled jalapenos, the sliced jalapenos, the the, the jar you saw earlier. It's gonna be these. Now my mother and I love jalapenos with our nachos. I'm gonna put a ton. I mean, I'm gonna put a ton. Uh, they're not spicy because they're basically pickled, so they're more sour. But jalapenos add so much flavor to nachos. I just can't resist not having any jalapenos. You can tell when I'm serious when I say we love jalapenos. And now we're going to toss this in the oven. The oven's at 400 degrees. You're going to bake this for 10 minutes or until the cheese is nice and melted. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in. All right, we are back. It's been 10 minutes. I just took it out of the oven. My nachos are ready to eat. The cheese is melted. The tortilla chips are nice and brown a bit. So we're gonna, I'm just gonna plate this and we're gonna add the final touches to make this the ultimate vegetarian nachos ever. I'm sorry for the view, it's a bit, it's a bit narrow, but I'm just grab the plate. I'm gonna pull this up from the pan and I'm going to try to slide this off. Finally got it onto a plate. I just basically took a spatula, scooped it under and slid it over with the parchment paper so it slid off easily. So now the final touches, you wanna add or fresh homemade guacamole. 
gonna add it right here. A nice giant dollop. You can't have you can't have nachos well. Go on. get some moss. Come on. As well as sour cream. Nice dollop. Right there. And you can serve this with your favorite hot sauce as well. We like to use Taco Bell fire sauce. And for one more final touch, I'm adding some more coriander. Because you can't go wrong with coriander. As well as some more green onions, nicely chopped. Adds more color to the plate. Tastes really good. And then you have it. Vegetarian nachos. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. You can click on the subscribe button on the bottom right of the video. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them down below. If you have any specific recipes you want to see that we make, let us know in the comments. We we'll definitely are interested in doing that. You can follow my mother on her other social media platforms such as Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, and Instagram. You can find the links for those in the video description. Make sure to follow us on those because we definitely do post updates about new videos that come out. Thank you again for watching. See you next time, foodies. My mother and I are going to go devour this plate of nachos.